Hey everyone, so we're at the Corsair booth at Combitex. We're gonna take a different angle to this. I saw all the other guys in the Corsair suite covering it. Our focus is going to be more on the design of the fans and some of the performance characteristics or the performance targets, some of the customization that Corsair is doing on the bearing. I'm also going to provide some of my thoughts on the new IQ link system and the many different link systems that are now entering the market. You may have seen our height video, Lee and Lee, we covered their system. They're all different and they all try to solve similar problems, but not everyone's going as far to resolve data and power through the same connection with full control. So industry is kind of scattered right now on the approach, but our focus today is going to start with performance of the fans. We'll move into a teardown of a GPU hybrid block as well. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly. Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut and Cryonaut thermal paste are high-performing thermal interfaces for use on CPUs and GPUs. You can bring an old card back to peak performance by repasting it and doing preventative maintenance, and Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut is ideal for water cooling and air cooling for new and old cards alike. Cryonaut paste is one of the top performing pastes for extreme overclocking with CPUs and GPUs and has been used in several world record scoring machines. Learn more at the link in the description below. So this is where Corsair has a cable. I was worried there weren't going to be any, and then I found uh, a massive amount of them. So they've got a cable that hooks up. You can do a fan-to-fan -fan direct, so you could hook two of these up directly, you see the other side of that there. There's a little bit of a magnetic force to hold them together. And you've seen this before in other types of fans on the market, but it is a different execution of that. And uh, this one we're going to talk more about momentarily in terms of what Corsair is trying to resolve. But that's the main change on the fan externally before we get into the characteristics. Everyone, I think, has been talking about LCP blades and trying to resolve, especially Noctua, performance limitations right now. Corsair is fully embracing going for lighting, which uh, I think is fine as long as that's the market that someone's trying to hit because to do both super high performance and 34 programmable LEDs like they have in here and all these other connective features, you end up with a fan that uh, at that point would be impossibly expensive. You would be buying a CPU priced fan basically. So Corsair is trying to maintain the balance of performance without adding something like LCP. Now, this is a point I forgot to mention in the Noctua video, but LCP or liquid crystal polymer keeps coming up uh, because, uh, actually this part we mentioned, but because of the blade distance from the inner wall of the hub, as the blade spins and especially as it ages with additional heat, you have an expansion of the blade where if your tolerances are very tight, it'll start clipping the wall. So if you've ever had a fan that's on the lower quality side, you'll hear it as it ages. Uh, start clipping and that's that's an indication that the material has expanded over time uh, and it does eventually uh, maybe not literally kill the fan but it kills its usefulness so that's what lcp tries to solve the other way to solve that problem is to not run tolerances so tight that it becomes a problem to begin with which is the more traditional solution the reason everyone doesn't just go to lcp is because it's really expensive so Nocto at least gave us a relative number that we can share. Uh, they were saying that specifically for their fans, it's about a 20% increase going from, uh, I think it was an ABS type plastic to LCP, or in other words, from Nocto's standpoint, an acceptable, it's a fan plastic to LCP, 20% increase, plus then you start adding LEDs, which of course Nocto doesn't do, uh, it becomes impossibly expensive. So that's why answering the question of uh, can't you just do the highest quality materials always? That would be why. The blade distance here is about a little over one millimeter. It's like 1.0 to 1.5 from what we understand. So they're pulling it back a little bit to better uh, allow for expansion over time and not have it drag against the frame. And that's a point that uh, I, I think is worth emphasizing here is that it's okay to not be right up against the frame because the outcome of it being right up against the frame is potentially bad. So Corsair is drawing it back. The hub is also pretty different. So the bearing is a magnetic dome bearing, which is a heavily modified rifle bearing. So to go over this, uh, the objective Corsair had, as it described to us, was to minimize friction and contact within the bearing. So any, any type of bearing, you have some form of lubricant in there. And we've shown FDBs in the past. They're a, a more expensive solution to the problem rifle and ball bearings, all of them have a form of lubricant to reduce friction. And one of the problems 
with, uh, say, a traditional rifle bearing or a sleeve bearing is over time you get some grinding of the materials on lower quality bearings, lower quality fans that can kill the fan if you start having plastic or material shed inside of that lubricant and start to cause friction. So Corsair is attempting to solve that by modifying it for the magnetic dome bearing that they're making for this especially. As for why it's called that, so the answer I got was the impeller shaft is a dome or a convex shape. There's a contact patch magnet. Uh, they have a graphite pad in there that connects to this. And the magnet is supposed to keep the shaft down and minimize the contact uh, and the friction. And it's supposed to stay in the same place regardless of the speed of the fan, which is another one of the challenges with lower quality bearings. Uh, as you start speeding it up, you might increase the friction. Or as you slow it down, you might have like a wobble which will come through normally acoustically, sometimes visually. So that's what Corsair is trying to do on the bearing. As for the spec, so typically with fans, you either market for airflow or for higher static pressure. Corsair is marketing evenly down the middle. And uh, Corsair also noted to us that it has an ultra high performance fan, was, that was described, coming out at some point later. We don't have a date yet, don't have a price yet, but the goal for that one is going to be purely performance driven and Noctua sets a, a high bar there with its current eight years of development to still not ship a fan, but it's on the way, they say. Uh, so they're going for a high performance to compete in that market, and I'm assuming that'll be stripped down in terms of the LEDs and uh, some of the lighting. One of the challenges too, one of the reasons you don't see a mix of all the LEDs plus a high performance fan is because clearly you start chewing away at some of your diameter, you're forced to use certain materials. So if you want like a nice diffuse LED, that limits the plastics you can use to something that will diffuse well. So the single PCBA that goes through it all, which helps with rigidity. Thermistor in the support strut here means that you're gonna be catching the wind on the backside of it. It's either going to be basically your ambient temperature at intake, or it might be a system ambient temperature, an internal case ambient. And all of that data is also transacted across the bus. Uh, for IQ Link. So the system, Corsair is using the phrasing ecosystem, which uh, in this instance is because to have these devices work, uh, it's going to need to all be Corsair. And the system next to me shows off the end result of it, where a ton of LEDs, this is actually something that is commendable for all the companies right now, which is for people who do care about LEDs or LCD fans or whatever, the number one nightmare of all of it. I think everyone knows has been not just cabling, but also the software is all trash. So that's been the biggest challenge for the last probably six or seven years at this point. And so Height was talking about this as well, where uh, they are trying to eliminate the single type of device per chain or link, where you, if you have LED strips, it needs to be another LED strip, it goes through, you have fans, it needs to be another fan, it goes to like the Lee and Lee ones, the Unifan body, where uh, as soon as they're disparate devices, no longer is it within the same ecosystem, serially or in parallel. So that's kind of the, that's the problem. The solution Corsair has is a two channel, seven device per channel, 14 device total hub. Uh, and then this has a, is there a cable? There's one. This has a, a micro fit connector here. So this is a six pin that, that plugs in here. And that terminates in actually, yes, a PCIe six pin. I asked what the spec, the total power capacity rating of this setup is, and the answer was 168 watts, which is actually pretty close to a six pin spec in general, so when, until you start adding the two cents lines. That doesn't mean it pulls 168 watts, just to be really clear, but that is the spec. So I'll cut past some of the more marketing speak on all this. The, it, I think it's built well. I think mechanically this all makes sense. It all connects very easily. Height is going kind of the same direction, although they're, we thought their cable was a little clunky, maybe because of the prototype. Either way, this mechanically is built well. It makes sense from uh, an electrical standpoint as well, where you're powering now with a six pin, you have to build a high amperage. Actually, the cables uh, can handle at least I think it was seven amps, uh, and it should be more than that technically, but I think they're saying seven. So power handling, uh, data management, and mechanics, I think makes sense. I wanna put that all out there first. The concern I have is uh, the proprietary nature that we are currently forced into in general with RGB LED, where what I was saying to Corsair earlier was we are moving from a, a standard 
that was shit to a bunch of proprietary options that are much better. And obviously the ideal is you move to a standard that is better, but currently we're not there with RGB LEDs, uh, especially once you start considering managing data. So things like writing to LCD screens or writing firmware for LED behavior, writing or uh, controlling TAC for FAM, all that stuff causes problems. And right now, if you want a set of height components, you want a set of Corsair components, you really can't do that. They need to be isolated systems. So it's not an easy problem to solve. I don't expect Corsair to solve it, but it is a complaint I have, which is just everything's going proprietary and there's not really an open enough ecosystem, which although kind of makes sense because everyone's trying to do different things, the bigger problem, I think, from a market perspective, market health perspective, is that because these are all disparate things, uh, ultimately locking people in to certain ecosystems, even if an unintentional side effect of trying to build something better than your competitors, will restrict growth in the greater DIY scene uh, because it limits options where sometimes you might want to mix different brands with other brands because they both make something the other one doesn't have. So we'd like to see it go that direction. That's a bit idealistic, but um, that's, that's kind of how we are, I guess, with a lot of our stuff. As for compatibility, despite all of that, older Corsair hardware, at least with say the Commander Pro class of hardware, is still supposed to be compatible within the same system. So. It, I guess the, the comment that was brought up to me, Corsair saw some concerns on Reddit, uh, which, is where, uh, which is where all concerns originate. Actually, a lot of things originate, not all good. But people do actually read those comments. The concern was, I guess, that people thought they might have to discard old hardware if they want to move to new, and there's no support between the two sets of them. And just to be very direct, Corsair says, no, you will be able to use all of the devices within IQ. So that should be answered at this point. So, okay, last thing we're gonna do is tear down a GPU block. So now we're gonna look at the Corsair GC01. This is a hybrid cooling solution for video cards. We actually used to look at these a lot. So EVGA really popularized them many years ago. Uh, and typically the word hybrid for a cooling solution with the GPU refers to the combination of a liquid cooler, often an AIO, in this case you go open loop, with air cooling, and so there's a blower fan on this one. Uh, as for why it's blowing into a solid wall, there's actually a bit of a channel cut out over here, and the intent for this is to guide it via the external shroud to the VRM components. Corsair is trying to solve the problem of building as much of a one-size-fits-all as they can with the GC01, uh, because as soon as you get into video cards, it's, it's a nightmare of different options for PCB sizes, uh, hole spacing once you get into different GPUs, and all that stuff to accommodate with the VRM layouts changing on every single board a lot of the time. So they're trying to get airflow to the VRM, which avoids the challenge of fitting metal components to it, also keeps costs down. I'm gonna take this apart now. So this is, just to put it out there, this is a show model, which means a lot of people have interacted with it today. So down here is the PCB. We're gonna start though with just the, uh, just the cold plate. These are all T6 screws. So uh, this comes pre-assembled, but we're just pulling it apart to look at the micro fins. There you go. We'll look at the channeling in a second. So we've got micro fins oriented this direction and typically what you'll see with GPUs, so uh, on previous ones, like the old EVGA hybrid, they would actually protrude this out, which allowed a little bit taller microfin, but more importantly at the time, it was EVGA's approach to try and solve for a, a very specific curvature of the Pascal and Turing era GPU dies. Now the dies uh, only have a little bit of a bump in them. We talked about it in one of our videos uh, previously. Um, so this one ends up being a flat bottom. There's no protrusion. They have the micro fins in here, and if we pull the actual block over, you can see a channel right down the middle here, and then it's just in and out for the tubes up top. So this housing is plastic. This black part is PCB. It's, it's just directly uh, exposed PCB to the bottom side. It's acting, as I said earlier, as sort of a, a flow guide where the air is supposed to exit out over here using a squirrel cage blower fan. Certainly a better choice than an axial in this situation, um, just because it does end up being a, a high impedance. And there's the plate. 
And as for these pads, this is just for programming. I don't think end user wise, this is not something you need to be worried about. Up here, I've just got stuff falling out all over the place. This is what happens when you take things apart. Uh, up here is the connection for Corsair's new everything. So we're gonna talk about this separately in the video, but you can see it's the same type of connection here. So this is how it all bridges together. You could use like a 90 degree, for example, or one of the uh, one of the cables, does it orient? Yeah, the way I think it does. So there's how the cable connects. That's the uh, control link, basically. Fan does have an LED in it, and we've got shots of this from a system where it's actually assembled. So that's pretty much how this, is, this uh, block is built. Really simple on the hybrid stuff. Uh, these are really situational. So the one thing I really want to caution people about, first of all, this isn't on the market yet. They don't have a price yet, don't have a release date yet. The one thing to be aware of is if you buy a lower end card with a poorly designed VRM, uh, if you don't have direct cooling on it and it's a poorly designed VRM, it doesn't have the capacity to just soak the power. So any anytime you're water cooling a card and there's minimal contact, minimal cooling, you really need to be aware of the PCB you're buying. There have been VRMs that are woefully underpowered for what they're actually powering. So that's what you need to be aware of when choosing one of these. Ultimately, from what we understand right now, there are blocks for the 7000 series of AMD cards, at least the 79 XTX. And then there should be a block for the 40 series uh, in some SKUs. So each, each model has a little bit different hole spacing as you come down the stack. 4090, 4080 to memory, I think are the same. Uh, you get into 4070, certainly 4060 in the future. The whole spacing tends to draw in closer, so it'll require a different uh, specific model or at least different hole spacing. But the plan for right now, of course, here is going to be supporting 7000, 4090, 4080, and probably a 4070 Ti. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, and we'll see you all next time.